Hello, Matthew Williams here with a quick video, although it probably won't be quick, on how I made the V antenna, which is this thing. V antenna. Okay, now some people see them up like this at 90 degrees, so they're a bit more like that. So they see them sort of going up like that. V antenna. Okay, now basically this will radically so they say, increase the performance of your transmission and reception. Um, lots of reasons behind that, but look up V antenna and you can see the instructions on how to make this by a gentleman called Dean. I think it's Dean Scott is his name. Let me just double check. Uh, Dean A. Scott, yeah. Um, he first did this in 2006 and he's revised this in 2011 to sort of you know update it for people but basically it's quite simple what you've got to do is go and get some steel rod this stuff steel rod and you basically cut it to the specified length which I've done and the specified length then has to take into consideration these little things here which let me just focus this in uh, these little things here which are basically loops okay so the way I get the loop is um, you get uh, you get your metal like this, and then you get one of these gas butane propane gas guns. You turn them on, fire them up, okay, and then basically before you even attempt to fit anything, you start heating the metal. Okay, it's turning off because it's quite noisy. So you start heating the metal up, and um, basically uh, you need to give it about a minute to two minutes worth of heat in that sort of area. And then what you do is you get a pair of hook nose pliers and when you can see it um, yellow or red, glowing yellow or red, you basically get the pliers and you start to twist it round. And you might find it goes qu quite quickly goes cold so you'll have to heat it up again. And just keep doing it gently until you take yourself round into a nice loop. And the loop will be like these loops here. And you can see they're actually underneath, um, underneath these uh, screws at the moment. But uh, yeah. So basically, then I'll just show you the, the little loop. There it, there it is, one of them there, that one there, the loop. So that was done really simply by um, just heating the metal up. So then you've got to get yourself a polypropylene cutting block, which is like a kitchen chopper for people to chop their uh, chop their vegetables on. And that's what this is. You can see it there, and it's got like a sort of work surface finish on it okay now the, the important thing is buy one that's at least 0.9 centimeters or you know even one millimeter uh, sorry one centimeter that's 10 millimeters maybe even 12 to 15 get nice thickness thickness equals security of this device because you don't want something that's going to be too thin a lot of them are too thin and you can you'll be able to snap them this is fairly solid so um Okay, what you do then is, now you've got your, your loops on this, is you get the measurements, and the measurements are given on the design site, so basically I put a line in, then I measured it five, it five centimeters, and I've cut this plastic block five centimeters, so 2.5, draw a line down the middle. Then you need to um, make your marks for drilling, so drill a hole, drill a hole, drill a hole. Okay, and then basically you have to get a bigger drill bit, and you have to drill through, because this BNC is actually, uh, fitted down inside it you see so um, basically you have to recess this now I didn't have a drill bit big enough to do that so what I did is I used I used this um, gas soldering iron here which uh, gets very hot and you can basically just gouge out um, using it slanted sideways you can just gouge around and either flick it off flick it off, flick it off, or as I was doing, I, I gouge it, move it to the edge, gouge it, move it to the edge, move it to the edge, move it to the edge, and then basically later on cut the edge off with a um, Stanley knife or a craft knife so you can cut the edge off and you can see where I've sort of cut around it at the top there. So, okay, you've got, you've got your bits um, for the BNC, fit the BNC through, you need to do that on both sides, you need to recess it on both sides, fit your BNC through, screw it up. Um, okay, then you've got the actual 120 degrees of aerial, which is like this. So it's actually got a 120 degree angle from, let me just show you, from there, you can see the line which has been drawn down to here. So this angle here is 120 degrees. So draw your line in, in uh, permanent marker 
onto this polypropylene. And then what I did is I got my gas gun again, and I spent about two minutes, three minutes, heating up the rod. Okay, so you can hold the other end of the rod. It won't get hot because the, 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 the heat won't travel down that far. So you can, you can still hold the hot rod, and you'll feel it getting hot if it's going to get hot. So basically then, get your gas gun, heat up the, um, heat up the rod, uh, with the loop and then basically all you have to do is just press the loop onto the polypropylene you just press it down and just hold it there and it'll just start to sink in and as it sinks in it melts the plastic and creates a little nest for itself full of the molten plastic so it makes a very neat fitting where the plastic will grip it and it really does you know glue onto the uh, the metal and it's quite solid and before i put these little safety clips on here i mean you know basically you can see that it doesn't really want to come out it's pretty solid and i'm not going to force it because it probably would come out but you know that's pretty well glued in there now so for safety then you've also got these uh, terminal attachments here which we uh, are going to use to put on some uh, coax cable and the coax cable is going to go from here and be soldered up to the BNC and it's also going to go from this one and be soldered onto the shield of the BNC so the shield one is the one that should be facing down towards the ground and the center part of the BNC is the bit that will be going on the one that goes upwards facing so once you've got um, both of your uh, both of your sort of curly pieces of wire and bear in mind you have to take into consideration that the measurement needs to be from the center of there um, all the way to the end so you have to accommodate for the fact that you will have bent some of the wire over so that's why I say bend the wire over first using the heat gun and then once you bent the wire over then take your measurement from the center hole center hole there then measure to the end then chop your wire off okay I'm going to be getting some uh, end cap fittings they're known as um, uh, rubber caps or plastic end caps. End cap is what you want to have a look for on eBay. And I'm basically going to glue these onto the end so that there's no sharp metal that's going to poke anyone's eye out. Um, you know, you could still cause damage if you walked into it, but it wouldn't be so bad if it had the, um, the plastic end cap on it. So to make it safe, you know, the bigger the better for the end cap. But I wouldn't make it too big because it's going to be wind dragging, so it's going to cause more... Uh, wind drag at the end. Okay, so next thing I did then was just drill two basic holes there and there and there and there and I pushed a standard uh, standard cable tie through and the cable tie goes onto the other side and then I basically tensioned it up and tensioned it up there and there and the reason for this is is because if there was a failure of the glue along here um, the, the plastic that's melted which has become, now become its glue if that did fail then this is a secondary method of stopping it coming free you've also got this so this is a primary method of um, stopping it coming free the secondary method is the uh, the glue and the third method you know so you've got three safety methods here to stop this aerial detaching from that so that looks pretty safe so all, all we need to do now is solder on the um, cables onto here and then what we're going to do is, once we're happy that these are all soldered on, this side doesn't need to be seen. So I'm going to get a glue gun, and I'm going to glue gun over the top of all of this to seal it in. And that will keep it looking nice, and it'll keep the moisture out. And then all we've got to worry about then is moisture on this side, and then the BNC, if it does get wet, can always be cleaned out, blown out. Um, and then we might even put some silicone sealant and seal the whole thing on on this side. But but this side is the bit you want to be worried about. So sealing that up around there. And if you ever need to get access, you can always just pull the glue off. It'll come right off again. Whereas if it was the plastic, the plastic would have to be melted. But the glue can just be yanked off. So that's quite good. Hot glue gun, you know, the syringe guns. So there you go. That's, um, that's my uh, aerial so far, as you can see. It's going to be mounted on the aircraft um, possibly tomorrow if I get enough time. And I will bring you another video of when it's mounted on the aircraft. And then I'm going to do some tests. And if I can, I will see whether I can get some audio in the air and actually do some tests with somebody um, at a distant airfield. Um, ask for radio checks and get some radio quality reports. And uh, so we'll put that up online soon. Thanks very much.